Hey guys, it's Urbanized Dreams here with a new video, and it's been a really long time. Uh, I had to take a break from YouTube. I just got kind of fed up with it, and I got fed up with uh, collecting model cars and uh, doing stuff on the STI. I just I got burnt out from everything, and some stuff like the model car collecting was just stressing me out, and it wasn't enjoyable anymore. So uh, this video is going to be like an update video and also a video a little bit about, about here on the Tarmac Works 164 scale and just kind of going over my new interest and what I'm going to be doing for, we'll see how long, but first I want to just give an update on why I stopped collecting 118 resin scale models from brands like Ignition, Kyosho, and Auto. Honestly, it, it had to do, like my, my cutoff point was with like when Ignition um, was doing the initial D. So like my last video I did for the model cars was the Ignition RX-7 from uh, with the figurine. And you know, that thing cost me like $700 Canadian to buy it from Ignition and all the shippings and customs. And it, they really pissed me off when they did that release. And usually when they, did, when they do like the web specials with the figurines, they usually give you like a lot of breathing room. So like, cause you know, they're expensive. So like they'll release it and then, you know, it's going to be not really like, and the next one won't be released for a while. So people can kind of at least like figure out their finances or something. Um, and uh, the thing is, is I'm going to drop this down just to make the video a little bit progress. Um, a month later, they like decided to release the 8.6 with the figure and the white RX-7 with the figurine at the exact same time. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's $1,400 I'm going to have to spend? Because the thing is, somebody might question, like, oh, well, you don't have to. Like, if you're not in the hobby, you'll be like, well, why did you have to buy it right away? You don't have to buy it right away. You just wait. You can't. Because the thing is, like, they're super limited. I think there's, like, what, like 60 or 80 in the world. If you don't buy them day one for MSRP, which is the manufacturer suggested retail price, if you don't buy it then, you're basically going to be paying, like, the stupid inflated prices on eBay from all the scalpers. So, you know, like at that point I was like, you know what? I'm just done with this whole like hobby and this whole 118 thing because it's the same with Auto and Kyosho. Like it's cool that they're limited, but at the same time it's like you have to buy it once they get released. So even with Auto, like it's cheaper, but it's like, okay, it's maybe 150, 200 bucks with like taxes and you know shipping and all this like for Canada and the thing is is like okay good it's not 700 so I can buy like three autos but the thing it's the same thing like if you don't buy it that month of the release they get all sold out from all the hobby stores and stuff within, within like one two months and then you go on eBay and you're like oh wait that same model now is selling for 300 so like um I was more focusing on ignition at one point and then you know I got fed up and then I thought maybe and, and I stopped making videos, but I was like, okay, maybe I should go back and maybe look into like Auto or Kyosho again. And then Kyosho Samurai is basically like stop releasing stuff. They release like models like once every six months. I, I don't know what's going on with them. And then Auto is still doing stuff. And I saw that they released my STI and I, I kind of knew about it. It's the 2018. So the, their version is like the 2020 and I knew about it and I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll look into it. Um, but by the time, you know, I went to actually buy it, which I didn't buy it, but by the time I went to buy it, I was like, it was like 300 something dollars, like $350 on eBay. I'm like, this is stupid. Like it, auto, no offense, but auto, like their quality control sucks and their models, in my opinion, have like a lot of issues and yeah, they're worth a hundred bucks. They're not worth 300, you know, for 300, I'd be paying, I'd rather buy auto art. But then, like, you know, Auto Art has the same thing, too. Like, they're so expensive, and then, you know, if you don't buy it within, like, the certain point, it's, they become more and more and more expensive, and it's just not fun. Honestly, I was like, this is just stupid. And, like, the issue with space and buying constantly, having to buy more cases, I was like, you know what, I'm done. So I ended up, actually, cut it short, I ended up selling everything. I sold all my model cars. Uh, I got just so burnt out and fed up with the hobby that I ended up selling everything, just making my money back and uh, just using that money on other things in life. Now, it's been a while now. I think, I don't even know how long it's been now, but 
I've been getting the itch to kind of get back into collecting model cars because you know the, if you're in this hobby you're in this hobby for life in my opinion but there's points that you know you just get to back away so I decided you know I was thinking like oh maybe I should go back and like maybe I should focus on you know auto or something and then yeah like I just kind of went over the whole issue and I'm like you know what I'm done with 118 I don't want to deal with it I don't want to rebuy because I sold my shelves like I'm like I don't want to freaking do this again so something that's always been interesting to me is these guys so if you didn't watch the first part of this video because I'm going to put a timestamp thing on the con description so you can skip my rambling if you don't want um so this has kind of got my interest these 164 because these remind me of Jada Toys 164 import racer option d-line so i'm trying out a different a bunch of different brands so i got the tarmax i had a whole bunch of other tarmax um but i i, I decided to sell them and uh, i just kept these two which i'm also like i'm gonna i'm selling them i um because i want to try also hobby i'm trying to find like a company the perfect company for me basically so i, I want to also try hobby japan uh, Tomica Vintage, which I've already bought Hobby Japan and Tomica. It's just that they haven't been shipped out yet. So once they get them, if I have these, I'll have these in the videos. If these sell, I won't have these in the videos. Uh, and then there's Eno. So let me go over this stuff. So uh, Tarmac works in my opinion. Like every single one I got from them, I got like 10 models from them. Uh, they were really good. So like there was no quality control issues and stuff. So I was pretty happy. So, you know, I got the iconic, uh, one second, maybe I'm gonna move stuff. I gotta. They got the iconic uh, S15 drift car, which looks amazing. Um, my only issue, and why I um, like, I mean, it's crazy. Like for such a small scale to do such detail, and then the Apex view, which is like super nostalgic, because I I used to have the Jada Toys one. Um, yeah, very, like, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really impressed, but I'm trying out the other brands because the issue I have with Tarmac is they have the global 64 line and then they have the hobby 64 line or something like that. So this is the global. So the global, the difference is they roll, which is like, yay, they roll, woohoo. Um, but the problem I have with them is they don't come in the plastic like how do they call them like acrylic cases like hobby japan eno and the global or whatever line they come with plastic but the global line for tarmac it's a, it's basically like racing cars which i don't really care too much about um and i mean like even this like this is not my focus of the collection i just got these because they looked cool and they were nostalgic but the problem i have with these is that for Tarmac is like, okay, for a little bit they were doing releases like this. And like these kind of boxes, which I don't know, in my opinion, they look nice. And then the model car, you know, was inside. And you can kind of see it, so you can keep it sealed. You can kind of stack it. But then like now they're doing is like these boxes, which I don't like. And I mean, Tomica is doing the same thing. The only, the only reason I'm trying Tomica is because people like overhype that brand so much saying it's amazing. So I really want to see for myself like what it's like. But it's like, okay, cool. I got this box, right? So I can't keep the car in the box because, you know, what's the point? And then you take the car out and it's like, okay, if, you, if you're into like dioramas and playing with them, okay, sure. But I'm not into that. Like I, I like to have them displayed because I'm more into like static displays. So... You know, that's why I bought these HKS container things. But the thing is with these is that, first off, they don't give you, oops, they don't give you the um, plastic thing to actually keep it standing. So you can't, like, you know, it's like, what's the point of paying $15, like, was it $12 for this? You know, for these things, like, what's the point? And the other thing I don't like is that when they're inside, you don't see the model as well because there's no you know you can't see it and I was kind of doing the numbers and I was like okay if I'm gonna stick with global or tarmac road 64 it's like I'm gonna have to buy these stupid things all the time really to have them displayed or I have to buy other cases and because of shipping nowadays with model cars and like all this crap being so expensive I'm like 
it's just too expensive. It's not it's not worth it in my opinion. Like yeah, they look cool, but as like backdrops and stuff, but it's not I'm not interested in that. And also I'm more interested in OEM spec cars now, not modified tuner ones cuz for the past like couple of years and it's been a while, I've kind of preferred just original cars, but you know, the problem with this is like I have nowhere to display them. It's, and, and if I have them in these cases, they're flopping around everywhere. I mean, you can stack the cases on top of each other. But it just, I don't like that. So, um, and that's my negative with Tarmac. Other than that, like, I mean, Tarmac, I, I mean, like, wow. Like, they do a really good job. Quality control seems to be really, really good. Uh, but it's just not my thing. Now, what I... Um, I'm looking to is now is hobby. So before I talk about hobby Japan and Tommy Ken, why I chose those and not Eno. Eno is looks beautiful. I love like their packaging. I love that they come in the plastic cases. The problem I have with Eno is again, it's not too focused on OEM cars. It's more focused on again uh, either tuner cars or um, what's it called uh, like again race cars. And the other problem is because I don't want to have this as an addiction where like, oh my god, there's like 5,000 versions, I have to buy them all, is um, the whole, um, why is this one not focusing? Come on, S15, focus. There we go. I um, the, the reason why I don't like the, you know, is because like, they do like 20 million variations. And like, it's not because of color, because when like, Hobby Japan does, you know, five versions of the same car in different colors. You pick your favorite color. But with, um, you know, it's like, oh, this version has these rims. This version has this livery. This version. And it's like, to me, what that's going to create is like this whole thing of like, oh, my God, I got to buy 20 versions of the same car because they all look cool. Because they do. It, it kind of, you know, it really reminds me of Jada Toys where they all look unique. They all have nice cases. Um, but... That's kind of my issue. Is like they don't really focus on OEM. They don't focus on Subaru yet. But you know they're kind of lacking. They're more focused on Honda, which I love Honda. I'm a Honda fanboy, but you know it's not as much as OEM, and it's very focused on just the, the whole um, tuner kind of thing. So I want to just not really be into that anymore. Now. Hobby Japan and Tomika, why I chose those is because, and, and why I didn't chose Ignition, because Ignition has 164 by gallon, like just the whole like tuner crap, I'm just so over it. Um, they have the Hobby and Tomika, so I'm going to try those. They have the plastic cases for uh, Hobby Japan. I like that it's like all OEM spec. I like the diversity of JDM cars. They have like my STI in there. So I like that. No idea how it's going to be like. I'm going to check it out. But I just like that I can display them better. Uh, unlike these because I don't you know like I don't like leaving them out in the open like this uh, and then I really don't like this this option and um, the other thing is is um, with uh, Hobby Japan is like you know because there's so many of them so many releases it's not like I can just pick what color I like and move on I don't have to like sit there and go through 20 hours of figuring out which livery I want and uh, Tomika, Tomika has the same issue as Tarmac, this. But like I said, people keep hyping Tomika so much that I really want to try Tomika vintage line. And I, I bought, I bought the red Evo four, and uh, the WRX wagon in white to try. And the reason I got those two is because for Hobby Japan, I ended up getting the 22 B STI and the Mitsubishi Makinen Evo in red. So it'll be a good comparison, comparing like the detail and seeing what I prefer. Um, and then I also got the initial D and uh, that's the one thing with Hobby Japan that I'm really kind of leaning more towards is that they have the initial D line, which I really want to reminisce my initial D line from Jada. And I also really like, um, they did like Akichu Suchia NSX. So I think Hobby Japan is kind of going going places. I'm really excited, and I I would do Tarmac, but I just it sucks that these these releases don't have actual um, um, cases, and to buy the cases separately it's just not worth it for me. And 
I, I love the camera. I love this camera. It's just like, yeah, focus on the containers. Uh, so yeah, once those come in, if I have these, I'll, I'll put them in the video. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to start collecting 164. We'll see how long it lasts. I'm hoping that I'm happy with either Tomica or Hobby Japan. If I'm not happy with any of those, then honestly, I'm just not. I'm not going further in this hobby then. I don't want to go back to 118 or anything like that. So we'll see. Um, we'll go from there. But uh, these are definitely cool, these drift ones. I like them. But this to me is just such a deal breaker. Like the the packaging. And Tomica's going to have the same issue. But like I said, maybe I'll be blown away with Tomica because Tomica's OEM. So. You know, maybe, but I hear Tomica has a lot of, like, issues with paint rashes, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'll have them listed on eBay, so uh, if, if whatever I don't like. Uh, I love these, but again, like I just said, I just don't, like, I have nowhere to display them. I don't like this container idea. I thought I liked it, but I just don't, I don't, because it just ends up being so much money and stuff. So this is cool if you're into, like, opening models and playing around with them. So, uh, and I like the guy, the guy, the owner. I watched like a video about him, like on, uh, what is it, Houston Model Cars YouTube channel. He had him as like a guest for a podcast or something. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling. It's a really long video, but it's kind of like an update and just me getting back into 164s. We will resume. We'll see when I get those other ones, but expect a new video sometime either in December or January. And uh, yeah, as for the STI, I don't know if people follow both my STI and the model cars. Uh, I'm not really doing anything in the STI, I'm just keeping it stock. Like, whatever is done on it on the YouTube channel is kind of what it is. And I just prefer cars being more original now. So, yeah, anyways, that's it for this video, and uh, peace out.